in the interest of covering stuff that most people don't talk about, <laughs> I'm gonna go into my kit and pull out all of the black eyeliners I have. And it's not just one or two. They're all different. It's kind of like my cotton bud situation. And they all have different purposes, different personalities, and function differently. So I thought I would talk about those today. Are you ready for me to count how many I actually carry with me all the time? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen. Are you ready to dig in? Let's talk about why I have so many black eyeliners. When I think about black eyeliner, I think about Cleopatra, I think about Susie Sue, I think about Nina Hagen, I think about Kate Moss, I think about Joan Jett, I think about Brigitte Bardot, I think about Sophia Loren. It is one of those products that can cover such a wide variety of looks. It can be gamine, it can be sultry, it can be tough, it can be punk rock, it can be goth, I mean Robert Smith. It could just sort of traverse this whole world of emotions, feelings, and things that you want to convey. So it's definitely a staple in a makeup artist's kit. It can give you a very graphic look. It can give you a soft, sensual look. It can give you that sexy uh, day after I woke up with my eyeliner smudged look. And you kind of need different things to do different things. I can't promise that I'll never do a tutorial on how to do a black eyeliner, but I will say that there are certain things when you're putting makeup on someone else that make it really helpful. I always do this, right? So my hand has somewhere very solid to rest and I always have a puff and I rest it on the person's face. I know that some people can just do it like that. That's definitely not how I can do it. But um, finding balance or using this hand to balance against always, always, always helps. Another thing is cleaning up black eyeliner can be really messy and can be daunting because you don't want to mess up all the makeup around it. I have two tips for you for that. One is I don't use eye makeup remover when I want to sharpen up a line or if I have to correct something, I use moisturizer. And the reason is I find, except for Bioderma, which doesn't leave any residue and doesn't really compromise the, um, the texture of the makeup, that works, but I also really like using moisturizer because I can get a really clean sweep on a super short, uh, tr tightly wound cotton bud. And if you need to know more about cotton buds, you can find that out here. Uh, and then I just clean it up with that and then go over it with um, like a synthetic concealer brush that's nice and flat so that I can keep that sharp edge of the eyeliner by running the um, like running the concealer right up against the edge of the eyeliner and that'll make it crisp and unless you can get that line super perfect the first time if you have to go back and correct it it compromises the uh, sharpness of the line and a way to recreate that is by using concealer I thought I would talk about markers first because they're like markers they're super fun and exciting First one I'm gonna talk about is Pat McGrath's, and I think you can still buy it. I hope you can still buy it. It was one of her first releases, so I still have the one with the little sticker on it before she started doing like proper production. Um, it is this one here. So it has a skinny and a fat, which I love. Here's the skinny end. And the other side has a fat marker, which I like. Um, really great for doing super sharp really graphic shapes and again you can use the skinny side for something like this more detail work and the fat marker side for a big nice scribble or graphic shape um it's pretty inky black it has a little shine to it which i like not too much uh, you don't get quite like a patent leather effect but you do get a nice bit of light reflection the next one i'm going to talk about is this one from Maybelline. Ooh, she's tough to get the cap off. There we go. Snap. And that is this one. And this is what this one looks like. So it's a little bit bigger than the Pat McGrath one. I'm going to do a little side by side so that you can see. This is the Pat and this is the Maybelline. So it's just a slightly sharper angle and a little bit of a thicker um, 
mark, which you can see here. So this is the line from the Maybelline one, and this is by using the sharp end of the point. So this was done by giving a nice wide line, and this is just from going like this. So super versatile, love that one too. And that one's a tiny bit shinier than the Pat McGrath Labs one. Can you see that? Okay. So I just like having a variety of them. You know, also part of it comes from paranoia of um, what if something's dried out when I open my kit? So I tend to have duplicates of things that are liquids because you don't really know when they're gonna run out versus having a pencil where you can see it get shorter and shorter as you sharpen it. The last one I really like is this one from Makeup Forever. It's the graphic liner. And that is the one that gave me this line. That's my dog scratching, it's gross. Um, so this is like a traditional felt one. It's got a pretty good sharp point. And it's got a nice long body, which I like. Sometimes if they're too short, I can't quite get the, the tension that I want. And I also don't like it to be too floppy. Um, I like to have a little resistance. If it's too floppy, then I, it kind of wobbles. And obviously you want a liquid line to be straight and sharp. When I'm really needing to do a beautiful sharp wing, I love to use a liquid liner that is a calligraphy brush. And I always turn to Asian formulations for this, so either Korean or Japanese. I like the ones from Surat, I like the ones from Clio. I love going to the Japanese markets and finding uh, the super long wear tattoo eyeliners. They're usually like a one day tattoo and they do come off, but they also have great long wear capabilities, which is really important if you have someone like me whose eyelids come down to my lash line practically and things transfer and everything. So I like to have like a transfer resistant formula. Um, here I have four different liners on my hand and I use liquid liner not only for doing like a sharp graphic line, but I also love to use it to paint over um, the band of false eyelashes. Sometimes you'll have the Invisiband. So you have the clear plastic band but you can still see a little bit of the white, uh, like a little bit of the band sometimes can catch the light. So I like to go in with a matte liquid liner to mattify that so that makes it more seamless. Or I like to fill in the dots in between the lashes um, with a brush tipped, not the felt tip, but the brush tip liners because I get better control to really make those seamless and blend them in. So this first one is from DHC, and this is one that I mostly use for, uh, that's, that's this one. This is one that I mostly use for sort of filling in lashes and stuff. So it does have a really good brush. It's, um, I don't know, it just doesn't have the same, oop, doop, doop. it doesn't have the same control as some of the other ones, but um, it's great for sort of like mucking about in between the lashes and, and fixing things. So that's kind of why that one is there. This is the K palette one day tattoo one. And this one's really great. It's got a good stiffness to the brush. I can really get a lot of control and it has a nice amount of shine to it and it's really good in black. So I love that one. This one, I don't think they make anymore but I think I found something similar on Amazon, I guess. You can just sort of Google slim, um, Slim eyeliner brush, maybe? I don't know, figure out what you Google, but it's this one. So this is the brush on that, which is incredible for fine detail work. And really getting in there, look how tiny she is. Okay, let's just do a little compare and contrast. Here's the K palette one, and here's the Clio slim line. Look how tiny she is, amazing. So if you are doing anything sort of fun and artistic and you need um, really tiny detail brush that's great or often I'll get the shape of a wing in and then I'll come in with this and just get the very sharpest flick I can at the end because there's only I don't know, hardly any hairs in here compared to the other ones it's amazing anyway it's a good good one to have and then my favorite of all favorites truly is the Surratt um, autographique liner so that's this one and it did this line which is the really inky black it's not as wide as these so it may not look as black to you but it really is super inky black another thing i really like about this 
is that you can get replaceable cartridges for it. So you don't have to throw away the whole pen when you're done. You can just buy new cartridges, which I think is really thoughtful. Also is sort of um, stationary nerdy, which I'm also guilty of being a stationary nerd. <laughs> and I can get the sharpest line in one stroke with that tool, with that product. Uh, there isn't a lot of, I don't know how to explain it. Like you can just go over it very gently and very finely and create the most amazing line. And uh, if you've ever used black liquid liner, you know it can smell your fear. It knows when you're nervous and having the right tools is so helpful and can actually help you execute your job much better. I mean, when I was growing up, we had, I don't remember what that drugstore brand, I mean, it's maybe Maybelline or CoverGirl L'Oreal, the one where you have the cap here and then a long wand and then some janky hairs here and you're trying to get this line and you can never get it straight and it's always wobbly and it looks really thick and um, that Surratt Autographique is really truly the mother of all liquid liners. Here's my <laughs> no one day tattoo liner left on the hand after I tried scrubbing it off with a baby wipe. So, um, oh, yeah, that took a minute to really get it off, but now it's clean. Takes a minute. When it comes to doing regular eyeliner, I prefer a wood clench pencil, which is your traditional wooden pencil that has been around for decades. There's gel pencils too, which are great. Uh, you can't get them as sharp. They're a little squishier, so it's not great for like a really sharp line. Uh, they do last for a really long time, which is great, but they're also harder to manipulate. So you really only get a little bit of playtime and then you are stuck. And some dry faster than others. I think Charlotte Tilbury maybe dries the fastest out of all of them. So if you want to do like a smudgy black eye, it's really challenging and it's challenging to get it to blend with shadow. So if you're going to do a smudgy black eye, I think a wood clench pencil is the best way to go. This one from Antonym is my total holy grail all-time favorite. It is also EcoCert certified, which is a really hard certification to get for organic products. So it's a really good clean beauty product and it gives you a really great inky black coal. And after a little while, it doesn't set, but it becomes a little less transferable, but it's not like a gel pencil, but it is inky, coaly, and so beautiful. I love it in the waterline. I love it pushed into the lashes. I love using that for the base of a smoky eye. I love using that to get like a nice line at the base of the lashes. Unless I'm doing a cat eye, I don't generally love a hard line at the lash line. I like it to be a little soft and blended. So that's a great one for smudging that out a little bit and softening an edge. It's such a great product. And I just replaced that in my kit because it was a teeny tiny nubbin. Um, so I saw that on Reed Clark and I'm grateful because I can always go into my stock and steal products for myself. The other one I love is the one from Kevin O'Quan. Also tiny little niblet, time to replace it. And this one's sort of like a dustier formula. It has like a sootiness to it that eyeliners don't generally have. So it's not shiny at all. It's really matte. And this is great for that sort of Kate Mossy, slept in, grungy, um, rock and roll eye, which I also really, really love. You know, it's funny, I, I almost never put eyeliner on someone straight from the um, pencil. Uh, I, I'm not really sure why, but I've always uh, put it on my hand like this and then taken a brush a little bit like this one, which is a Kevin O'Quan concealer brush. And I put all of the product on the brush and then I I go on. I, I don't I don't know why. That's just the way I do it. I get better control. I can maybe I'll lay down a little bit of pencil on the lid first, but um, unless I'm doing a waterline, then obviously I'm gonna use a pencil. But um, I just tend to get better control with it like that, and especially with gel pencils because gel pencils can be so tricky and dry so quickly, and are difficult to manipulate once they do dry. I definitely like to. Uh, take the pencil and a brush and then just 
coat the brush with it from the pencil directly and then go into the eye and apply it that way. I, uh, I, I guess I've been doing that forever. I don't know, but it's really handy and I, I promise you you'll get better control if you try that technique, but I like to use a really small stiff brush like this one has um, pretty stiff little bristles and is very small so I can get in between all those gaps in the lashes. Uh, the two gel pencils I have in my kit right now are this one from Makeup Forever. They really just make a good, good jet black. So this is the one I just showed you. Um, the other thing about gel pencils is I can never get a super sharp point. And if you do, it sort of ends up squishing anyway. So I'm always happy if it's about like that, which isn't incredible, but Chihuahua footsteps. So Victoria Beckham had a had a collaboration with Estee Lauder for a while, and I think it was all limited, and her stuff was so good, and I hope she comes out with her own line, and if she already has, and I don't know about it, rats, I should go find out. Um, anyway, so she had this pencil that was, um, this side had like a nude color, and I just tore it off. I didn't want it. I have other nudes. But what I really loved, and there's only this much left, was... <laughs> was um, this side because this is a really juicy, wet, uh, juicy, wet black gel liner that um, you had a good amount of play time with. And then once it sets, it's it's really in there, but it, it's, it's like, it's got a real slip to it and a glide and look, it's so glossy. Oh my God, so good. I don't think Estee Lauder has anything like this in their collection. I think this is a formula that, that, that they just did together, but boy, it was good. It was really good. You know why? Because you could manipulate it like the coal, like you could manipulate it like this Kevin O'Quan one, but it just had, has more staying power. Um, and then once it's, once it's set, it's, it's pretty set. Like I can still manipulate it a little bit, but it's not going all over the place. The Charlotte Tilbury one, as soon as it's on, it is, that's it. There's no more playtime. So that is great and has its places. But again, I really just like to be able to manipulate stuff. I like to be able to go back in and work it. And if I made a mistake, which I do all the time, I need to be able to correct it. I did figure out a way to correct gel pencil. Um, what you do is you take a little bit of traditional pencil on a brush over it and then you can kind of manipulate over that and the emollients sort of brings a little bit of life back to it and you can kind of get a little bit more play time out of it but yeah it's tricky great for real life great for if you want your makeup to last all day but we always want to go in and tweak and perfect and if you're on set all day and you might need to do a touch-up for somebody's eye tears and the makeup gets messed up around it you need to be able to re-manipulate stuff so that's my diatribe on gel pencils. So there are a couple of other categories of black liners that I have in my kit. I have uh, a gel liner in a pot. This is the one from Inglot. I have this Daenerys. <laughs> Who's got Game of Thrones on the brain? Uh, Danessa Merricks. She's not the mother of dragons, but she is the mother of pigment. Man, her stuff has some great pigment. Um, another one from her, which is like a cream, which I've used a couple of times and I really like it, but I really wish I had the opportunity to have like a big black crazy eye that I could use that for as a base, but that just hasn't happened just yet. And this last one is from Il Maquillage, which wrist in peace, it doesn't exist anymore. Although I think they just tried to relaunch it, but it's not the same. When I first moved to New York in the nineties, there weren't a lot of uh, small makeup lines that had boutiques and this was in Midtown and you had to go upstairs and it was amazing the colors they had were incredible you know makeup forever at the time you could only get in Paris and so anytime I went for the shows I would make a beeline for that but this place was in New York and they had great incredibly vibrant colors any makeup head who's been around as long as I have would probably remember this line and um, they had really great powders, like loose powders for women of color, which were also very hard to find at the time. So it was sort of like a cross between a theatrical makeup line and a professional makeup line. It was great. Anyway, I saw something about a reboot and it, it looked pretty disappointing. 
Um, but anyway, this isn't a cake liner from them. Uh, Laura Mercier, I believe, has a cake liner. And I have one in my kit in brown also that is Laura Mercier. And they're great if you want a wash of color. So I put a little bit, uh, like two or three drops of water in the cap. And then I use a brush to brush it on. And you can control the opacity, which is really nice. Sometimes I want a little definition at the lash line, but I don't want it to be super inky black. Or sometimes you need to sketch out a look uh, for a really graphic eye, say like something ace freely ish or something if you're going to do something that really covers a, a good portion of the face it's nice to be able to sketch it out with this it's less committal um, you can get a good flow with it and i think it's just a really great thing to have in your kit um laura mercier has one so when i use a liquid uh like this or a cream or a gel or something that does not have a brush component to it i like to use a brush like this this is the Smith Cosmetics 202. So it's nice, short, very pointed, pretty stiff. Let me see if I can show you from the side. Do, do, do. Not really. Um, pretty stiff, and I always make sure when I brush it, uh, sorry, I always make sure when I wash it to bring the hairs back to a point so that it has more longevity. This one is from my Kitco, and this one has a longer handle. Um, Depends. I know some people like to hold it from the edge and get a nice long line. I like to just muck about and try different things. So the My Kit Co. Feliner, it's called My Feliner, it's 1.22. That one, um, you can see it's a uh, taller, longer. So it's personal preference. I have a bunch of both of these in my kit because I like to have multiples, but they're, they're really great. Um, this Inglot one is a traditional gel liner, and I have thoughts about these that I'm gonna subject you to. Here are my thoughts. Versus a product like this, the Surat Autographique. From, okay, let me just rewind a little bit. I like makeup that sits on the face and feels like the face, right? Like I like it when it absorbs into the face. I love a cream shadow. I like a liquid liner. They have a thinner profile than a powdered eyeshadow, which of course I use, but um, and a, and a thinner profile than a gel liner. So when I try and do something really bold and graphic with this, I notice that, and this is not, this is nothing to do against Inglot. I mean, this is interchangeable for any pot gel liner and this is something I've struggled with with this type of a product is there's a dimensionality to it that I'm not crazy about there's a millimeteriness wow I just made that up uh, to it that that you don't have with a liquid liner so this is flush against the skin there is no there's no uh, there's no thickness to it so I, it doesn't get wobbly, right? So sometimes if I try a gel liner like this, there's a bit of a wobble in where it meets the skin where um, you can't ever get that super crisp line because uh, there's, there's, there's width to it. So it's great for filling in, it's great for certain things for sure, but if I want that crispness, then I make sure I have something in this department. The last one I'm gonna talk about is the cushion liner from Vanessa Merrick's. Uh, I think her products are really great, especially for long wear and especially for something that's heavily pigmented. So this is this one. And it has a little cushion in here. Super cute. And this is great for if you wanna do, obviously just a traditional cat eye or something, but also if you wanna do something graphic and experimental, maybe you wanna put polka dots all over someone's face, but you definitely don't want it to move. This is that product. So. It has the little cushion and it's pretty inky. You can see my hand from earlier. And then when it dries, it is good as gold. I mean, if you really wanted to push it, you could, but um, it's it's really not going anywhere, which is great. And also it has a, a thinness to it, which is sort of what I was talking about before. Some things just have more density to it and leave more density on the skin. And this one is so thin and so opaque and really manipulatable 
until it no longer is. So it's a really great product. Um, and that is why I have 15 eyeliners in my kit. I hope that makes sense to people. Obviously you don't need to have this many, but I guess I just like to be prepared. Anyway, I hope you thought that was interesting, funny, educational, all the things. I will happily nerd out with you about anything having to do with makeup, anytime. Thanks for watching. Having the best tools and the best products actually makes a huge difference in how you apply something. So having something like the Surat um, Autographic Liner is wildly helpful to you if you are just a civilian who loves makeup or if you're a professional makeup artist or even just dabbling and you like doing makeup on your friends, I promise you, you will get a better result by using better product. If you've tried any of these and you love them, if you've tried any of them and they don't work for you, let me know. Um, if you watch this video and then you decide you want to try something, put in the comments how you feel about it because I'm here to help, I'm here to share, I'm here to educate, and I definitely want to know if what I'm sharing is helpful. So let me know. I can't wait to hear all about it. Thanks so much. Like, subscribe, share, tell your friends. Come back and watch. Thanks so much.